Praise God, beloved saints. Thank you for joining us today uh, for this wonderful podcast. Like we promised you earlier through the video that spread out during the day, that today we'll be talking about altars. So it's a wonderful opportunity that the Lord has given us to share about altars. But firstly, um, before the teaching, we want to appreciate everyone that is doing everything possible uh, to give towards the, the, the ministry. Of course, we continue to come to you with, with, with the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and many other things that the ministry is doing even in this period of the lockdown. Uh, so I want to appreciate the leadership of Epilosis, Paparoni, um, uh, Hope, Vivian, uh, quite a number of leaders that are behind this uh, that sit to discuss for the ministry and many other things. So we really want to be grateful for you, um, uh, my, my, my leaders, uh, men and women with whom we serve in this same labor of the gospel. Uh, I want to appreciate you so much. I also want to appreciate you, our viewers, uh, people that follow us on our different social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We have a YouTube channel in the names of Epilosis Ministries International. We request you to go there, subscribe and watch uh, the videos when you subscribe you have an opportunity to receive notifications uh, when videos are ready for you for for, for viewership um, so we want to appreciate everyone and above it all we want to thank god for the blessed opportunity he always gives us to come to you with the words of his grace so before we begin uh let's pray father in the name of jesus we want to thank you for today we want to thank you for your grace and mercy for the wonderful opportunity that you've given us to share the gospel. Indeed, we are grateful to you. We count our blessings one by one and say that it is you, Ebenezer, God, that has been with us and you are with us. You are in us. You fill us. You multiply us. You increase us on everywhere and on every side in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I have been doing a couple of teachings on, on how to pray and receive results. The Lord laid my heart when the month had just started of June to share uh, to share about prayer so I've done I've done so far two parts this is going to be the third part and by the grace of God I'll do one more part probably in the first week of July and I'll be done with that it doesn't mean that that is the end of prayer uh, but um, the grace of utterance that the Lord gave me was for prayer which I have taken more time to teach and elucidate and explain and do all these things uh, so that you cultivate a wonderful relationship with God through prayer. There are so many people who read the word but they don't pray because they want to substitute uh, knowledge for prayer. But when you read the word, it should push you to prayer. It is very important to acquire knowledge, but it's also important that you cultivate your relationship with God through prayer. So you'd find that there are times two extremes of people who pray a lot and don't read the Bible. Praise the Lord, which is also wrong. You can be praying, but you don't know what God thinks, the heart of God, the mind of God, the feeling of God. So it is important that as you pray a lot, also have a time to cultivate knowledge in your spirit. The Bible says... Um, the, the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and it shall be the strength of your salvation so it is important to carry both wisdom and knowledge because that gives you stability and then you need the prayer also you need a life of prayer i read to you a scripture last time that says and the lord jesus spoke this parable unto them that men ought to pray always and not faint so it is incumbent on us it is a mandate on our spirits to pray always but as you pray always also balance it with the knowledge of the word praise god don't be only one-sided otherwise you will live an unstable life because you have yielded so much to prayer without the knowledge or rather that you are held so much in your pursuit of knowledge and wisdom and you have neglected the most important thing which is also prayer so these thing, these two things must move in a close consonant that you pray and you have the knowledge of the word it is it is incomparable we can't compare it to anything so today in uh, we are taking our reading from genesis chapter 8 verses 20 praise god and the bible says um genesis 8 
let's begin from verses 15. The Bible says, And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee everything that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every fowl and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an ark unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt sacrifices, burnt offering, sorry, on the altar. Praise God. Um, the, 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 there has been a lot of misconceptions on altars. But when you're reading scriptures, there are laws, principles that govern how we should read the Bible. And one of those laws is um, something they call the law of first mention. These ones, theologians will tell you that every time something is mentioned firstly in the Bible, usually it carries a distinctive meaning uh, in the ways it is being used. Of course, we know that knowledge increases. Knowledge keeps on advancing. So you realize that the first time a thing is mentioned, it has a very distinctive meaning in the way it is used firstly. Praise God. The first time the word grace appears in the Bible was when the Bible says, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the first time the word altar is mentioned was with the man of God called Noah. Praise the Lord. And amazingly, this happens after the flood, that the word of the Lord comes to him and the Lord instructs him to, to, to build an ark, to construct an ark. Because of the evil that was prevalent on the earth, the Lord decided to watch away everything. And what happens is that Noah gets into the ark and his family and everyone, which is a, signif a typical civic signification of the working of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he came to save humanity. So the floods come on the earth for the period they stayed, washed away everyone, everyone was killed and died in the flood. And what happens is that when Noah, this story comes after Noah had sent a dove to go and check if the flood was no longer existent on the earth. And what happens is that the dove comes back and gives him news that there was a dry ground where they could dock. And God spoke to Noah and he tells him, bring out all your sons and your wife, your son's wives. So what, what really happens is that when he gets them out of the ark, the Lord gives him a commandment and he tells him, bring out the animals, every creeping thing, and they shall multiply and they shall, uh, they, 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 they shall multiply and produce after their own kind. And I want you to pick a lesson here that if God spoke and said even creeping things will bear fruit they will be fruitful and multiply how much more you a normal human being praise god so these things come out and after that testimony after the establishment of that testimony this was the response that came from noah the bible tells us that he built an altar unto the lord he built an altar unto the Lord. This is the first time we are seeing the word altar appear. This is the first time we are seeing the word, the word altar appear. From Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 up to Genesis 8.20, it is when the word altar first appears. And understand the circumstance under which this happens. 
it happens after God had done something for Noah. It happens Noah erected an altar after the testimony of redemption for his family. Noah established an altar after what God had done for him. Let me help you understand if you don't know altars. Back in the day in the ancient culture, men used to, to erect altars and everyone that used to erect altars, they did so because God had laid their hearts to do so. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 that God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake unto us and to our forefathers by the prophets. And it continues to say as is in these last days spoken unto us by his son. So in the olden time God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. The Bible says that they prophesied as they were led by the Holy Spirit. By the promptings of the Spirit of God, they would speak forth. Praise God. So, the things, most of the things that happened, you realize that they were a response of the working of God in a man, and therefore they would respond that way. So, in the ancient culture, men used to establish altars. Praise the Lord. And this, this was the typification of an altar. They would get stones, they would get stones and put them as though, uh, you know, your bed where you sleep at home. So they would put them, array them as though it was a bed. They used to, of course, later through the instructions that were given even to Moses, you realize that the, the idea kept altars, but the, the, the substance that was being used kept on changing. Because you realize later that it was wood. Uh, firstly, it was stone. Then later you would see wood. Then you, later you would see brass and all these other components that were being used. But firstly, the idea was that men used to get stones. Pieces of stones. They would put them. And then they would get um, firewood and put it on top. Praise God. Then on the top of the firewood, they would put the sacrifice praise the lord then they would light the firewood the firewood would burn the sacrifice and then that sacrifice would produce a server that sacrifice will produce a server and the going up of that server unto god would have a, a quick instant answer to the person that has offered praise the lord and consequently that was the whole idea hallelujah so the first time we see an altar is because god has done something the man establishes an altar unto the lord later as the idea keeps on developing you realize what i've just explained that men used to establish stones and they would offer sacrifices unto the lord it happened it 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 kept on happening it it happened on noah then the father of the faith follows suit let's read genesis chapter 12 and verses 7. um the bible says let's begin from six and abram passed through the land unto the place of shechem and to the plain of morer the canaanite was then in the land and the lord appeared unto abram and said unto thy seed will i give this land the bible says it puts a colon and there builded he an altar unto the lord who appeared to him let's learn something here altars were places were places of testimony that proved the divine encounter that divinity would have with humanity. When God would encounter a man, that man would build an altar. Men never used to build altars so that God would appear to them. God would appear to them and they would build an altar. I don't know if you get the difference. They never built altars for God to appear to them. They built altars as a 
physical confirmation of the affirmed presence of God or affirmed experience they had with God. Hallelujah. I want to go slow so that you understand. And I'm sure you understand. Say amen. Say amen. Praise God. So, verse 7 tells us how Abram built an altar because the Lord had appeared to him in that place. So, the appearing of God was not subject to the altar. Are we together? The appearing of the Lord came first. The, 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 the spiritual experience came first. Then we would have, you know, the altar. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, as we continue to verses 8, the Bible says, And he removed from thence unto a mountain in the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent. Having Bethel on the west, and I on the east, the Bible says, And there he builded an altar again unto the Lord, and called upon the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you realize that firstly he builds at Shechem, then later in verses 8 at Bethel, and um, <clears throat> when you read um, when you read Genesis 13, 8, 18, he also built an altar at Ebron. Later his children follow suit and grandchild. Isaac built altars unto the Lord. Jacob you remember the transaction that happens when Jacob lay stones and slept and while he slept he is caught up in a vision praise the Lord and when Jacob is caught up in a vision what happens he sees angels ascending and descending praise the Lord Jesus Christ and he says I will build a house of the Lord it was a typification of the house of the Lord as he says in his own words and gates of heaven praise god so altars to them represented the house of god that's why abraham built an altar at bethel which was the revelation of uh, <clears throat> the, the the house of god then later when the revelation keeps on increasing he built another one called hell bethel which was the god the the, the, the god of the house praise god Hallelujah. I am going slow so that you understand me today. So, later you see that Isaac built altars unto the Lord. Jacob built altars unto the Lord. Moses built altars unto the Lord. And these altars, like I have mentioned, had unique features. An altar was not an altar if it didn't have a fire on it. So, firstly, there was a fire. Two, there was a sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There was a fire. There was a sacrifice. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, and then altars were given names like we have read. At Bethel, at Shechem. Altars had names. So every altar erected by a man or a woman of God or anybody at whichever level that altar ought to have a name what is what is, what is the name of the altar praise the lord jesus christ so genesis chapter 4 uh, we see another war that breaks out as a result of altars praise god the first murder um recorded in scripture was because of altars Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The first murder that happened was because of altars. Hallelujah. So if the first murder recorded in the Bible was because of altars, this is what actually happened. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 4 from verses 1, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare kind and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, the Bible says it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. 
and Abel he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. And to Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and he shall rule over you. Praise God. Consequently, when you read downwards, you realize he killed his brother. Praise the Lord. Cain killed his brother Abel because again of altars. They all sacrificed. They all gave unto the Lord. And one is sacrifice was accepted and the other was not accepted. But I have always taught people to tell them that what happened, God accepted the offering of, of Abel because he gave the first fruit of what he had but Cain gave the offering if, if if you're struggling financially ask yourself have you given first fruit of your salary to God praise the Lord you ought to give the first salary that you're paid to God because he is your priority and well, some people say, why do I give my first salary? It is scripture. Principles are here. Abel was Abel's sacrifice was accepted because he gave the first verses for says, and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. He gave God the first priority. Praise God. He gave God the first what? Priority. The message version says, Abel also brought an offering, but from the firstborn animals of his herd, choice cuts of meat. The Bible says God liked Abel and his offering. That's what happens. These are principles. The Bible says give the first fruits of all thy increase. Then they had animals. Today you have cash in dollars, in shillings, in 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 in, um, in yens, in what you ought to give the first fruit of all your increase. If your salary has been increased from one million to one point five, get all that and give it unto the Lord as your first fruit. The problem here is people think they are giving men. Your giving is to the Lord through the men he has established in your life. You're not giving as a contribution. You're not helping any ministry survive by you giving your first fruit. Praise the Lord. Because if you don't give, God will raise other people that will give. Hallelujah. So most people who suffer financially realize they have issues with tithe and issues with first fruit. If you have failed to keep a job in your life, ask yourself, did you ever give your first fruit? Because if you gave your first fruit unto the Lord, no man can shake you. Praise the Lord. If you ever lose a job, you can only lose it to get a better one. If an opportunity ever closes in your life, it can only close for a better one to open. Men that have learned to give God their first priority in life, God makes them a first priority in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he had respect and to Abel firstly and to his offering. He didn't have respect to his offering. No, when the blessing comes, it comes to you firstly, the individual. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the first murder recorded in the scriptures was because of altar issue. Someone gave... And another person gave, but one was accepted. And one was received, another one was not. Why? Because again, the principle, first fruit, the other one gave offerings. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, just to take you through, the distinctiveness of every altar is, firstly, that an altar ought to have a name. What is, what is the name of your altar? 
altars are in different things altars um there are altars that um institution there are institutions in this nation which are altars praise the lord so there are institute there they, they, they are altars on a country level there are also altars on a family level we have a family altar and we pray every night you understand so there are there, there are altars on a family level where uh, father mother and their children even the maid they meet and pray and there is power in that praise the lord if you realize most of the problems in homes is because people don't pray together there is a power and unity that comes when you pray. The Bible speaks of the early church and it says that they had all things in common. There is a spirit of being common, of having all things in common that comes on you when you pray. Praise the Lord Jesus. So there ought to be an altar in a family. But also as an, an individual, you ought to have an altar as a person with God. Then there are altars at church level. There are altars for the pastors where pastors meet and pray together. There are altars for the, for the general church, the meetings that are put there. And it is required um, of, every, of every church member that when instructions are released on the altar you get them and keep them why because those are things that will again establish you praise the lord so there are altars on different on different levels hallelujah and those altars ought to have a name what is the purpose of the altar hallelujah what is the name of that altar Uh, because that defines so much of the dealings that you have with God because of these altars. Then, um, every altar was an altar because it had a sacrifice. Praise the Lord Jesus. I'll explain that deeper as we go on. And every altar had to have a fire. What is the fire? The fire is the presence of God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that God is a consuming fire. So the fire, the fire, the fire is the presence of God. You can't say you are praying without... Him. John the Baptist says, I baptize you with water. But the one that comes after me shall baptize you with fire. Our God is a consuming fire fire praise the lord jesus christ hallelujah so you realize um, that these altars are, are platforms where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm remember um, jacob sleeping and he sees angels descending and ascending and immediately when he wakes up he builds an altar there unto the lord Praise the Lord. So altars are portals. They are, they, are, they are gates like Jacob said. Altars are gates into, into the inner realms of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. These, these, these are places that reconcile the heavenly with the earthly. They are gates in the spirit. They are gates of manifestation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God give me the utterance. There is a principle that, that, that even God is submitted to. And that is the one in Leviticus that says, every seed needs a body. It is incumbent on God that he can't operate on the earth as a spiritual being without a body. Praise the Lord. So if God can't operate on the earth without a physical body, God needs a body to operate. 
praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the devil needs a body to operate. That's why many people think that the aspect of altars actually belongs to the devil. No, it doesn't. The first man who erected an altar was Noah. It wasn't any man. What the devil has always been doing from generation to generation is a copycat. He copies what he sees in God and he puts it in his kingdom. That is the same aspect of for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What does the devil do? When people go to him for wealth, he tells them, give me your first child. The same principle, first fruit. Praise the Lord. Give me the child you love most. You understand what I'm saying? So the same, the, 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 the same, it just copies. It just copies what is here and it duplicates it the other side. And amazingly, people in the world are so committed to even give out their first sons, their first daughters, and people in the Christian Christian faith can't pay tithe, can't give their tithes. It, it worries you. Praise the Lord. I mean, it worries you a lot. So, in the New Testament, when, when, when the scriptures are speaking of... Um, Beloved, I beseech you by the mercies of God, Romans 12, love 1. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord. Praise the Lord, Romans. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, that you present your bodies. He didn't say as. He said, you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So you realize in the New Testament, uh, firstly, understand this. Bodies are offered, living, not dead. In the Old Testament, they used to sacrifice animals that are dead. And as the fire burns them, that small creature is heaven. In the New Testament, you put your body on the altar so that God may kill his consuming fire through the presence of God, may consume everything in you that is sensual. That you stop being emotional because the flesh is against the spirit. It is not a death physical. It is, it, is, it is sort of kind of separation and death that comes to you so that you are detached from the things of this world and you are totally yielded to him. Praise God. So when the Bible says that, uh, brethren, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice so bodies are put on the altars so that the consuming fire of God comes and you see like Paul says that brethren it's no longer I who live it is Christ who lives in me that place where you are so dead but so alive in him you are dead to the world but alive unto God because when you are alive to the world, you are dead to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. But also, you must understand that in that place where you are getting totally yielded to him, now he begins to work in and through you. Praise God. He begins to work in and through you. Why? Because you are dead to this world. You are dead to this world. You are dead to the cares of this world. You are dead to the worries of this world. You are dead to the, to the anxieties of this world. And you are fully yielded to him. Understand, whatever you yield yourself to, you become a slave to. That's why the Bible says we are slaves, we are servants of God. We, do not, we are born servants of Jesus Christ. We do not have any choice but to serve him. Why? Because we have given ourselves fully to him. 
There are people who have established altars in their lives knowingly or unknowingly. And at times it comes through constant communication. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because whatever you say repeatedly, you actually establish an altar of. There are people who have established altars of worshipping money, but they don't know why. Because you cannot be working from Monday to Sunday every other day. Money is your God. Because whatever consumes your time, you worship. Praise God. Whatever consumes much of your time, you do what? You worship. Where your heart is, so your treasure is also. What, cons what takes much of your money and what takes much of your time, that is the most valuable thing to you. For some people, it is their phones. Their phones take much of their time. Their phones take much of their money. They are buying data. And yet those phones don't even have an app of a Bible for them to read. They are actually worshipping those phones. They have established phones as their altars. That's why when you're born again, you understand that everything about you is an altar. Praise God. Hallelujah. Everything about you is an altar. Everything about you is an altar. From your social media handles, everything about you is an altar. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So these altars stayed in place because of consistency. You cannot have an altar where you pray today and pray again another day, the fire will burn out. Altars ought to have a fire burning every now. When we say we shall have a family altar every Saturday, it ought to be every Saturday. It ought to be every Saturday. Why? Because fire must burn on that altar. Fire must burn on that altar. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read Hebrews chapter 13 verses 10. Let's begin from verses uh, 7. Remember them which have the rule over you have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible says in verses 9, Be not carried about diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them which have been occupied therein. And verses 10, he says, We have an altar, whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. Let me explain. In the ancient culture, they had tabernacles. They had places where they used to go and worship in the temple. We had the, 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 the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The outer court, they used to sacrifice animals. Somebody would come, put their hands on the animal, declare all their sins. The animal would be released. It goes, and that person was, was you know, forgiven of their sins. We had the holy place where the priests used to go and offer sacrifices unto the Lord. Then we had the holy of holies. In the holy of holies, the high priest used to go there once every year. And he had to make sure there was no sin on him. Now, what used to happen is they used to put a chain on the leg of the high priest. Why? Because he would die if he had sin. So it was expected that the high priest would not be with blemish. He would go into the Holy of Holies and he would offer a sacrifice and that burnt offering, the sweet smelling server, would go unto the Lord and the Lord will forgive, would forgive the nation of Israel. Praise the Lord. But in the New Testament, Jesus comes as the perfect lamb. Praise God. When Abram and I, when God spoke to Abraham to go and offer his son, when they reach the mountain, the son says, Father, I see the firewood. But where is the lamb? And Abraham said, God will offer himself a lamb. 
And when Jesus comes in the New Testament, John looks at him and says, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ on the cross was offered up so that we may no longer have to offer sacrifices. It was the perfect sacrifice that was offered for me and you. You don't need any other sacrifice save Jesus Christ. He was offered. He went to heaven and cleansed everything by his blood. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we have come unto us in the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to the sprinkling of blood. The blood of Jesus that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. Jesus' blood was poured once and for all so that you don't have to shed more blood. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to offer a cow. You don't have to sacrifice. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice. We can't add on him anything or add on him anything. We can't subtract or add. It was the perfect sacrifice. When he was at the cross, he said, O Ramashabak Kathishen, something like that. Oh my God, you have forsaken me. Why? Because now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.20, that for he who knew no sin, he had no connection with sin. He, he had no relationship with sin. The Bible says, for he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus at the cross was made sin. He was the perfect sacrifice. Hallelujah. He was offered for me and you. Don't sacrifice anything. There is no sacrifice that you can even ever give to God that is bigger than the sacrifice of his son. That's how much God loved us when he gave his son to die for us on the cross. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ died for our sins. And every time you establish an altar, he was the sacrifice. Don't look at yourself, look at him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For we know his grace, that even through his poverty, it was that we might become rich. There was a perfect exchange. Hallelujah. There was a what? There was a perfect exchange. When Jesus Christ was at the cross, there was a perfect exchange. When the Bible says that, oh, we have an altar, they that serve at the tabernacle don't have, is because we look at Jesus as the perfect sacrifice. Those that serve in the tabernacles also have an altar, but they still sacrifice, thinking God is not yet satisfied. For us, we have an altar where we only look at Jesus and say, thank you, Lord. That's why we sing and say, Jesus paid it all for me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus paid it all. All to him I hold. Jesus paid it all for me. He, he was and he is the ultimate sacrifice. We must establish altars to simply remind God what Jesus, what Jesus did for us when he was on the altar. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So our altars must begin with, with the understanding of what God has done. Noah established an altar because of what God had done. We should establish altars because of what God has done. It doesn't mean it is there physically, but in the spirit, he has given it to you. Because the Bible says Jesus is the forerunner of good things. The, the high priest of good things. 
The Bible says he, have, uh, he has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So when we pray, we come in that understanding. If you are believing God for a job, when you put up an altar, say, Father, I thank you because you have given me the job. If you're believing God for marriage and you are a bunch of people say, God, we thank you for marriage. Don't meet to contradict the testimony to say, God, we need marriage. No, he has already given you marriage in the spirit. But now you are saying, Father, we thank you because through Christ Jesus, you have given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That is is the mind of altars that is the importance of altars please understand nobody in this life is successful without an altar whether born again or not i used to to, to visit a home where this muslim man he was one of the most successful businessmen then he had petrol stations and all these things and that man had an altar I, by, by now I understand that it was an altar and every night from 8 a.m. he would go up the stairs and he starts to burn his incense and it would burn throughout the night. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even men that don't know God have altars. Praise the Lord Jesus. They have ungodly altars. But we have an altar. That's what the Bible said. We have an altar. Whereof they can't eat. Whereof they have no fellowship. Whereof they have no communion. They, they can't come to the kind of altar we have. Your ministry is an altar. Your, you as an individual you have an altar. And that altar nobody can come to it. Praise the Lord. And your altar ought to burn with the presence of God. It ought to burn with fire every now and then. Come on, when you are seated and you're saying, The altar is burning with fire in the name of Jesus Christ. And you are praying in the understanding of what God has done. You're telling him, God, I thank you for my education because it is well with me. God, I thank you for my business because it is expanding. God, I thank you for my relationships. They are healthy. The ungodly and the perverse are far away from me. Because I have an altar, those that are not born again cannot come unto it. Those that are sorcerers cannot come unto it in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for the kind of altar that I have. God, I thank you because things are working together for my good. God, I thank you because I'm increasing and multiplying in the name that is above every other name. I look at Jesus, what he did on the cross, and Lord, I remind you that he purchased it all for me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I simply remind you that Jesus did, did it all for me. I don't require anything. I don't need anything, Lord Jesus. But Jesus did all. Did it all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, if you're there and you have any pain in your body, Right now, I want you to touch where you feel the pain. Jesus paid it all for you. He paid for your healing. Receive your healing right now in the name that is above every other name. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. If you're there and you don't have a job, believe God for that job. Thank Him. Thank Him for that job. Thank Him for that job. Thank Him. For that job. Thank him for that job. In the name that is above every other name. Oh, oh, to him my oh. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I take the crimson stain. He was she white as snow. We thank you, Lord Jesus because you paid it all for me. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you paid it all for me. We thank you because you paid it all for me. If you're there and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I am born again. Get to our numbers on, the, on, on, on our Facebook walls. Contact us, speak to us. 
we are persuaded the Lord is doing great and amazing things. May the good Lord bless you. Uh, God loves you.